standing at five foot nine, Barbara Ann Minerva might seem rather docile and tame, but when she transforms into her feral alter ego Cheetah, the reaction she gets is quite different. Introduced back in 1987, Cheetah has garnered quite a bit of attention, and she even got a screenplay adaption with Kristen Wiig playing her part. But what makes Barbara such an interesting foe? Is it her ability to use the lasso of truth for herself? Is it the fact that she can infect Superman and Wonder Woman with her claws and fangs? Or is it something else? In this video, we will look into the changes her body goes through that leads to her becoming one of the more significant opponents for Wonder Woman. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Dr. Barbara Minerva? How does she become a cheetah? There are a lot of interesting jobs in this world, but not all of them are as interesting as an archaeologist. Certainly, when you are an archaeologist, you tend to come across a lot of artifacts with rich histories and rituals that could come in handy if you are looking to gain stuff like youth and immortality. When Dr. Barbara Ann Minerva decided to go on an expedition in the African jungle, she really was not expecting her life to be changed completely. You see, Minerva was a popular archaeologist, and with the huge fortune that she inherited, she led a comfortable life. However, she had a lot of love for her subject, and she was willing to go to whatever lengths she needed to get her hands on an artifact that she wanted. Her expedition in the African jungles was meant to be for something else, but the goal of this expedition soon changed to surviving when she was attacked by the native Urzatagans. The team was betrayed by the guides, and the attack by the natives was quite surprising. Barbara and her colleague Dr. Tom Levens survived this attack by jumping into a river. When they came to their senses, Minerva and Levens were in for a surprise. They had washed to the shores of the lost city. Not only did they find the city that they had not expected, but there was a ritual going on there. It turns out one of their colleagues who was captured was about to be sacrificed to the native god Uzkataga by the high priestess Chuma. The two archaeologists quickly learned that the human sacrifice and rituals were being made to help this ailing woman who was considered to be the reincarnation of their cheetah god by the natives. However, before the ritual was complete, the neighboring tribe attacked them. Everyone was running for their lives and pretty much everyone was killed in this attack. Chuma, the high priestess, was saved by Nunerva. Together, they escaped into the temple that was bombed, leading to its closure. Trapped inside the temple with no hope of surviving, the two ladies got to talking and that that was where Minerva learned more about the ritual. Chuma stated that this ritual could be done only during a full moon night with a human sacrifice. Once the ritual was complete, the old woman that Minerva saw would have become the cheetah god with her youth restored, and she would have lived for thousands of years. Now when you have a goal of becoming well established in your field, and you are told that you can get an unlimited time at that, would you take it? Minerva sure did. She asked Chuma to do the ritual for her because that would give her immortality and power. However, Chuma was not too okay with that because this would require a human sacrifice and as they were trapped in a temple with just the two of them, there was no way Chuma would have been able to do the ritual. Right on cue, Levens showed up. It turns out he had been working really hard to get them out while the ladies were talking about the ritual. He had dug them out of the cave the temple was in and as a thank you for his generous act, Minerva killed him and drank his blood. Chuma had no choice and she started the ritual. While the ritual was ongoing, the tribe realized there were survivors and they planned to attack them. However, by the time the natives reached the pair, the ritual was done and after turning into a merciless cheetah woman, Minerva killed every member of the tribe. Once she had wiped them all out, she turned into her original form and took Chuma back to England with her. However, there was a problem that nobody expected. See, the ritual needed a virgin woman to become the cheetah and Minerva was not that. So instead of gaining her youth and staying youthful forever, once she returned to her human form, she became weak and frail. Instead, only on the nights of full moons was she strong when she turned into her feral alter ego. So with that, the famous villainess that has inspired a lot of cosplay over the years came to be.
How did Cheetah's claws infect others? When Barbara turned into the Cheetah, there were a lot of changes in her body. She became the ultimate cat lady, if you think about it. And with that, there were a lot of new add-ons that she was not expecting. However, the most interesting add-ons that she got were her fangs and claws. As Cheetah, Minerva had fangs and claws, and in the new 52 timeline, where she got a bit of a revamp, so to speak, we learn that the curse that she got for not being a virgin woman was so strong that it allowed her to infect others with them. Her claws are so magical that they cut through anything and anyone without any difficulty, which yes, includes Superman as well. We will talk about that in detail in a few seconds, but for now, just know that she pierced through his skin. Not only that, but once she did, Superman became a feral cheetah hybrid that Cheetah used against the Justice League. We also see Cheetah in Fair Wonder Woman in the Justice League animated movie. This time, the infection took a different form. Instead of turning Wonder Woman into a cheetah hybrid, this time the infection made Wonder Woman see cheetahs everywhere, all around her, even though they were mere citizens. So now we know that on top of her super speed, enhanced senses, and amazing agility, the transformation also gave Barbara magical claws. Cheetah pierces Superman's skin. How did she manage it? Now, there are not a lot of things that can take care of the Kryptonian in this world. After all, the Kryptonian physiology is no joke. It is invulnerable to most things, man-made or natural. However, there is one thing that Kryptonian physiology is susceptible to. If you think about Kryptonite, well, you're not wrong. But, there is another thing that can work on Kryptonian physiology very well, and that is magic. Superman has always fallen victim to magical stuff because it is not man-made or natural. The whole concept of magic is far too broad for the Kryptonian to be prepared against it. So whenever anyone pulls out something magical on him, Superman ends up getting victimized. This is probably why, when the Man of Steel ended up facing off against the feral cheetah, he was not expecting her to cut through his skin. At the same time, it is true that Man of Steel has quite the combat skills and everything. In the new 52 timelines, the curse that Minerva has is far too strong and quite magical in nature. That is why it was quite surprising when she bit Superman and her fangs actually sank into his flesh and infected him turning him into a cheetah Kryptonian hybrid. While most fans agree that Cheetah never stood a chance against Superman, you have to agree that this fight was quite memorable owing to her bite and how surprising it was to see her actually gain the upper hand. Has Barbara achieved equal mastery over Diana's lasso? If you are a comic book fan, there is no way you have not come across the lasso of truth that Diana carries with her. The Golden Prefect was always a weapon that Wonder Woman used in combat, compelling her opponents to disclose the truth, which helped her gain the upper hand. However, as it was a god-gifted weapon, one might think that just like Mjolnir, if you are unworthy, you won't be able to use the lasso of truth. That makes perfect sense when you think about it. But this is where Barbara comes in. Did you know that on not one, but two separate occasions, Barbara took the lasso of truth from Diana? Not only did she take the lasso of truth, but she was actually able to use it on people like Diana was able to. She had actually learned how to use her biggest rival's weapon with the same expertise that the owner of the weapon had, and Barbara did great at it. This truly paints Barbara as a threat if you have not yet considered her a threat. Is Cheetah truly faster than Wonder Woman? The Cheetah is the fastest animal on land, and that is one of the most basic trivia facts that we have learned since we were kids. So you can see that when Barbara turned into the Cheetah, she got some magical boost in her speed. As she transformed into the Feral Cheetah, she went through quite a few physical changes, and with her muscles significantly becoming denser than they were, she got the boost that she needed in her speed. If we look into Cheetah's speed stats, we will find out that she is actually in the top 10 of the DC Universe's fastest characters. She's actually faster than Wonder Woman. She ranked 6th on the whole list, beating Wonder Woman, Shazam, Godspeed and Kid Flash. This makes much more sense why Cheetah is considered to be one of Wonder Woman's biggest foes. After all, there are areas where Cheetah is better than Wonder Woman. 
How many incarnations of Cheetah exist in the DC Universe? Now, it will not be a comic book if there were not several incarnations of the same character. Cheetah was obviously not exempt from this treatment. In fact, there were four Cheetahs in the DC Universe. We have Priscilla Rich, the first Cheetah to exist. She was introduced back in 1943, so in a way, she is the original Cheetah. After Priscilla had her redemption arc, the feral foe returned again in the 1980s. This time, it was Deborah domain. Deborah too got a redemption arc and soon stopped tormenting Wonder Woman. This is where the feral foe returned with whom we associate the tag Cheetah the most, Barbara Ann Minerva. Barbara is now the most popular out of the bunch, but she is not the last. It turns out that there was a male Cheetah named Sebastian Balestros. He was Cheetah for a short amount of time, and out of the four, Barbara ended up leaving the most mark in the hearts of all DC fans. Can a cheetah's arms really transform into a cheetah's head? While the whole concept of a cheetah with one hand being transformed into a cheetah's head sounds extremely horrifying, the backstory behind it is far more scary and sad. As we know, there are a lot of alternate versions of the same character, and in the Dead Earth world, we get to see the version of Cheetah which was honestly rather sad to witness. Cheetah had witnessed the death of our planet, and not only that, but she ended up being captured by Faden. In this post apocalyptic Mad Max-esque world, Faden is the ex-tyrant who is in charge of everything. Being almighty in this broken world, whatever he wished for was met with haste. Cheetah was kept in a camp of Faden, and there she had to fight in the pit of never-ending fights to entertain Faden. The version of her that we see had gone through severe mutations to the point where half of her face was covered in teeth and one of her hands was completely transformed into a fully functional cheetah head. The sight is grim gruesome, and it is honestly sad to see the once popular archaeologist in this state. When Diana met her, it was evidently clear that Cheetah had been in the pit of never-ending fights for years, and when she met Diana in the arena, she was actually sorry for having to fight with her. Now while Diana and Cheetah were engaged in the fight, Hadra attacked the camp. This provided enough distraction for Cheetah to get out of the arena and go after Thaden. She wanted to kill him for all the torture that he had put her through, but Diana stopped her at the right moment. Diana also offered Cheetah help, but Cheetah wanted nothing to do with it and she ran away from them. However, this was not the last we saw of her. When Themyscira was attacked and Diana was really struggling to stand on her feet, Cheetah showed up riding the Pegasus. It turns out she had followed Diana to Themyscira, and that is why she was able to show up to help them at the drop of the shoe. Cheetah fought with Nubia, Diana's trainer from Themyscira, allowing Diana and her friends to board Pegasus and take Cheetah Cheetah with them. They all escape Themyscira. Eventually, Cheetah decides to go with Diana wherever she goes, and the last we see of her is when the pair decide to leave the humans behind and go their own way. How powerful is a cheetah's tail? When Minerva transforms into her feral alter ego, she experiences a lot of physiological changes. She gets nice cheetah prints all over her body, magical claws and fangs, and on top of that, she gets a tail. Now this tail might look like an aesthetic thing to go with the feral vibes she has going on, but the reality is that the tail of hers has its own magic. It turns out that cheetah is able to control her tail in more ways than one. She can almost use it as a lasso to smack someone if she wants, pull something towards her, and use her tail to help her move in a far more unpredictable way. The force her tail can produce is kind of unimaginable, because she can easily cut through trees with a swing of her tail. If she feels like it, Cheetah can even choke someone with her tail, and we have seen her grab Wonder Woman with her tail, and using her move, Tail Flick, she was able to throw Wonder Woman away with enough force that on impact with a tree, Wonder Woman ended up breaking the tree in half. Can Barbara control real Cheetah? In the 2006 issue of Wonder Woman, from the first panel of the comic, we realize things have been quite different. The new Wonder Woman is not Diana Prince, but her sister, Donna Troy. She mentions not knowing where her sister is after she killed Maxwell Lord. With Diana no longer around, Donna decided to take on the mantle of Wonder Woman. This led to where our story started, when a group of terrorists took a hostage in the embassy. When Donna Troy showed up there, she found something that shocked her to the core. Cheetah was there, 
with actual pet cheetahs. It was extremely surprising because neither Donna nor the fans were expecting it. On top of that, Cheetah was not in her feral form. In fact, she was in a human form while handling her cheetahs. As we learn more, this upgrade was thanks to Cersei's powers. This allowed Minerva to change into her human form whenever she wanted, and it also gave her the ability to talk to animals and control them, which definitely raised the stakes for Donna and Diana. How can a cheetah survive a shotgun blast to the face? Now when it comes to her durability, Minerva does get a significant upgrade. Thanks to the ritual, she turned into the cheetah god. Well, it is true that she did not meet all the criteria necessary and did not get all the perks of the ritual. Her durability increased quite a bit thanks to whatever perks she did get. She is highly resistant to injuries and she can easily survive any type of serious injury that would kill a human. It is not like she will be out of commission for a while, but the healing process for her is much faster. In the Prime Earth timeline, Cheetah had survived a shotgun blast to her face without many issues. She was out resting for a while, but in no time, she was back to being the feral foe Diana knew. However, when it comes to her new Earth timeline, her durability is still strong, but not as strong as Prime Earth version. In the new Earth timeline, she is much more susceptible to bullets, so chances are this Cheetah will not survive a blast to her face. Does she have any weaknesses? Now, while Cheetah is quite a formidable foe, she is not without weaknesses. As she gets her powers from the Uzkataga, she faces a lot of pain whenever she transforms into her feral alter ego. On top of that, once she transforms, there are moments when she loses all her intellect and becomes completely feral. Her mind becomes that of a predator, and instead of being able to control herself, she gives into her urges, no matter how violent they may be, and ends up eating her victims by ripping them open. This hunger for human flesh that she has is also something that she goes through when she does the ritual to turn herself into a cheetah. This hunger for human flesh is because Minerva did the transformation out of her greed for life, and this is her punishment. Marvelous Verdict Since her first ever introduction, Barbara Ann Minerva has captured the eyes of a lot of fans. Her struggles with her urges and powers are quite interesting. While in the main timelines, we see her bringing nothing but trouble with her whenever she crosses paths with Wonder Woman. In the alternate timelines, we do see her having some sort of redemption arc, and when we do see her working together with Diana, I do not know about others, but I personally feel that Barbara and Diana would have made a wonderful team. So here's to hoping we get a story where the foes come together for good and end up becoming an interesting crime-fighting duo. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. What do you want, Cheetah?